All right, if you were wondering how this exclusivity thing was going to play out, well, I guess it's one of those things where you have to come to the reality and come to terms with the fact that more and more of these so-called PlayStation exclusives are going to be coming to PC. This is a trend that was bound to happen. The only thing is I never envisioned how much this trend was going to move and at what pace it was going to move. To me, this is faster than I thought. The reason I say that is four years ago, I made a video titled Why Marvel Spider-Man Should Be on PC. And this was basically a critical analysis. This was when I was uh, maybe 40 pounds heavier. And so I look kind of weird in this video. So <laughs> forgive the cringe. In this video, I mentioned a few things regarding data points that I thought were necessary to overcome because there were gamer statistics that were being considered at that time. So here are the statistics at that time when I actually made this video. Number one, 67% of gamers were in the United States and 54% of them were PC gamers. This was a big number, not just a small number that you can just, you know, overlook. In seeing those numbers, I had to go ahead and make a conclusion that I thought if Sony was going to stay competitive, they needed to move to the PC market. This particular, uh, you know, set of data points also were born from the fact that around that time too, in 2016, a lot of people were not paying attention to what was going on and the PC market was growing. In fact, the numbers were in the billions of dollars in PC market hardware. I think what happened was technology advanced very fast. Many of you have seen the change from the 10 series to the 20 series to the 30 series to the 40 series, how much we've gone very fast in advancing new capabilities for hardware. I know you might say games are coming out, you know, not in great shapes and what, but that's the software side trying to catch up with the hardware side, if you get what I mean. So when I made these analyses and made these pointers, there were people who thought that these things were never going to happen. In fact, if you look at the comments from this video, and this is on my other channel, by the way, there were people who said they didn't think it was going to come, that Spider-Man was never going to release on PC, uh, you know, and they, in my opinion, I thought they had, you know, uh, uh, they had good points in that time frame that, you know, there's no way we were going to be seeing an exclusive show up on PC. But behold, not only have we gotten one Spider-Man game on PC, we've gotten two so far. And not only have we gotten only Spider-Man games, we've gotten Uncharted, we've gotten Last of Us, we are getting a Ratchet and Clank, and we're getting all these games. So what's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, Sony has got to fulfill its fiduciary duty. It's got to find a way to make money. It cannot leave the biggest gaming community, in a sense, in quote, or the biggest possible market that they can actually reach just sitting there while Microsoft and Steam and Epic and Rockstar and all these players just continue to farm all those dollars. You see, if you even follow the data points, you'll see that Sony has found it profitable. It's not a matter of them testing to see if it's profitable. They found it profitable already. If you look at this article that was actually written, uh, let me see, this was written on the 24th of May, so just a few days ago, they realized that the sales from the Marvel Spider-Man remastered on PC and the sales of The Last of Us generated Sony a good chunk of money. In terms of revenue, the revenue altogether somewhere around 67, maybe even almost $70 million. Insomniac's remaster, according to this article, it says Marvel Spider-Man remastered PC sales crossed 1.5 million. The Last of Us Part One sells 368,000. Somniac uh, remastered generated 52 million in revenue, while Naughty Dog's remake earned 15.5 million since releasing on PC. And many of you even know that if it wasn't for the state at which this game launched in, which was The Last of Us Part One remake or whatever, the game would have probably sold a lot more. Consider this with Horizon Zero Dawn, consider this with the God of War game, and even consider this with games like Days Gone, which a lot of PC players like, by the way. I don't know if many of you know, if we go on Steam, let's do this, Days Gone Steam, and look at the Steam reviews for this game, you will see that a lot of people enjoyed it. Uh, let's look at this, very positive. Basically, all the people who bought this game, or for the most part, most of the people who bought this game, 91% thought, uh, for the most recent reviews, thought the game was good. Overall, 92% of people who played the game thought the game was good. So when you think about all of these metrics, you can pretty much see that it is not only the fact that, you know, these games are profitable, it's that the communities enjoy them. In fact, if you look at Miles Morales, there's something really cool about Miles Morales in the uh, reviews for that game. It's only filled with a lot of this, take my money, take my money. What is this? Main story is seven hours for $50. So that's the only concern this person has here, that the game is not necessarily, um, you know, long enough. I get it. I understand. But at the end of the day, 
you know, that's the basic outlier in terms of concerns. But look at all the other reviews. Most of them are just full on positive reviews. They like these games. This is what PC players are wanting. Sony sees this. Sony wants to go in and make that money. In fact, right now they're closing the gap between a lot of the, you know, rev uh, the releases. Basically, when they come out on PC, from the time they are released on PC to the time they, for, sorry, from the time they're released to the PS5 to the time they come on PC, those windows are shortening. And even with the live service games, they're going to be day one. Some people feel a kind of way about this, but I want to say, first of all, you have to take your emotions out of it. You have to go with the data, the raw statistics, even when people are, you know, you know, showing uh, that they feel one way or nothing or, you know, and so on and so forth. What they what they feel is not necessarily going to align with what the profits are. And when I made this video, it, it sounded insane. And what's even wild is this was not the only video that I made. In fact, I made others uh, right before we got the announcement for the, you know, PlayStation release of the game on PC. And even that one, whoo, I got a lot of smoke for it. In fact, I even made one where I, I hypothesized that there is a scenario in a world where these games make their way to Xbox when some certain, some certain conditions line up. And that one, I almost, shoot, I could have been dragged into a, into a prison cell and locked up because people are very emotional about this stuff. Well, you can be emotional. Come on, we're adults here. We understand that the landscape of gaming is actually based on the fact that it can be financially viable for these companies. We're just benefactors if the games that they're making actually appeal to us. That's about it because not every exclusive is my cup of tea. I'm not playing Returnal, won't play it, don't care to play it. It's been recommended to me, but I'm not going to play it. Uh, I'm not going to play The Last of Us again, and I'm, I'm certainly not going to spend more money in buying another Uncharted remake or remaster. I already played those, and I'm fine with what it is that I've already done with those. But a game like Spider-Man, a game like Ratchet & Clank, they're probably going to pique my interest, but that's just how it is. So when all this comes into play, I think Sony fans need to kind of just go ahead and say, you know what? This is the reality. If we're going to keep getting these exclusives, this is exactly where things need to go. Because I don't know if you guys saw those two games basically showing up on PC generated revenues of about $67 million. That amount of money, you can take the profits from there and make yourself another exclusive PlayStation game and make more money from that. That's how these investments work. And I think that's how Sony is going to continue to pursue this stuff using their live service generated revenue and their single player generated revenue to just continue to churn more and more games. It is the cycle that has to happen. Think about it. When it comes from a sustainability perspective, this is what we in the gaming scene overall, whether you're a PlayStation person or a PC person, this is exactly what you need. Even as an Xbox person, you benefit from this indirectly because this means Microsoft will step up its game in whatever ecosystem it's trying to provide. So this drives the competition and eventually continues to bring out quality overall. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.